Aleluia. Glória a Jesus. I greet the beloved church, the ones who are also connected with us through the internet, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up, to read the Word of God, which is located in Uzziah. Chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 3, Isaiah 6, Hosea, Hosea 6, verse 3. Hosea, chapter 6, verse 3. Let's see the projection. Amen. The word of the Lord says the following. Hosea 6, 3. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He is going forth. He has established us the morning. He will come to us like the rain like the latter and former rain to be to the earth. Lord God, once again, we place our lives before your author. And we ask, Lord, your grace, your mercy, so that we may understand what you have prepared for each one who came up to our house tonight. Lord, we ask that you may bless us so that we may understand your purpose and that everything that does not come from the Lord, that comes from flesh and from men, may fall to the ground at this moment and only the voice of, spirit, of your spirit may speak to our hearts. We pray, uh, already asking mercy from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Church may be seated. My beloved, the text, it begins saying the following. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Who knows the Lord? We as Christians, we should raise our hands and say, I know the Lord. Is it true? Yes. Because the Christian that does not know the Lord is difficult. Right? We know the Lord. The church, the faithful church knows their Lord. You know why? Because we have experiences with Him. We live through experiences with our Lord and He speaks with us. What type of relationship that we have with the Lord? Individual, right? Each person has their own individual relationship with the Lord. Maybe one has a greater intimacy with the Lord, other less intimacy. But the Word says that we need to know the Lord, but continue to know Him. So that we may know and continue to know. You know why? Because the Lord reveals Himself to us every day, and He renews our faith every day. The Lord delivers our soul every day. He blesses our heart every day. Every day, the Lord. Thursday, we had a service here, and the hand of the Lord was not shrunk. He's laid upon his, the ones who are, who are his. We know the Lord, but we should not stop here, the story of Psalm, right? We should let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. It's a little bit difficult for us to fit into what the Word says here. Because every day we are renewing our salvation with the Lord at God's feet. But there is a detail here of this text which we are going to detain ourselves to. He says that the Lord will come like the rain. Do the brethren know or 
have heard how this phenomena happens. The sun, the sol, the sun heats the the sea, the the hot sun. That sun, get in touch with the sea, and produces vapor, and this vapor rises up. And at, at a certain po point, and it it stops going up, and more vapor goes up, and gathers with. The, the vapor that is already there and clouds are formed that get louder more and more as the ground raises vapor and this cloud becomes more dense and it was lighter and now it's getting darker now the wind hits the cloud and depending on the house I live in Boca and in Boca Raton it rains every day every day it rains there the wind only hits at that place. And this, this cloud gets heavy with so much water, and then the rain falls. It is simple. Very simple. But that's how, that's what the word of the Lord teaches, how the return of the Lord Jesus will come, like the rain. And why is that, my brethren? So let's go to the prophetic. Let's go to the prophetic, this event, this phenomena of the rain as the return of the Lord Jesus. Who is the son of justice, son of righteousness? Who is the son of righteousness? Who? Jesus. Jesus is the son of righteousness. The sea here is represented in what way? The world, the son of righteousness. Jesus, one day, he said to the Father, I'm, I'm going. I'll go to fulfill a project, to do a work in the world. Work which will benefit all the ones who believe in the project of salvation. And Jesus then goes to the world, touches on the sea. Jesus suffer, suffers here. He, he was doubted. He is slapped on. He suffered bitterness, physical pain, physical uh, pain of the soul, hunger. Jesus dies, and in the same way as the vapor that comes up, he rose from the dead. Jesus resurrected, and he gave us victory. But he said that he was not going to leave us alone. He was going to send the Holy Spirit to bring us comfort, to bring us peace. And the Holy Spirit has done this work. Jesus resurrected, but he sent his spirit. But he said that one day he will return, and he will return to take his bride. Now, how do we know that Jesus is going to return? Let's go back to the phenomena. How do we know that the rain is going to fall? The clouds begin to get dense, heavy. Spiritually speaking, how do we know that Jesus will return? The prophecies. But the Lord already said that was going to happen, and that has happened. Why do we know that? How do we know that we are the church of the last? Our the church of the time called soon. Why is that? Because we did not stop in time. Because we uh, met the Lord and we continue pursue knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord. Why is that? Because He is speaking to the church. When you hear about those things, look to heavens. 
Jesus speaks in, in the book of Luke. I even set it apart here so that we could read. They are going to have signs and sun, the moons and the stars, and the earth and the anguish of the nations. And there were perplexity because of the roar of the waves. Who has not seen the, the sea enter, enter into the land and causing great loss? The world, the man fading of terror of the expectancy of the things that are coming upon the world. Man fainting of terror. Nowadays, people leave their own homes, their countries, terrified. They are seeking a refuge somewhere else because the place where they are is very difficult. Things are going to come upon the world because they don't have any idea of what is about to happen. Because the powers of heaven are going to be shaken. So then the Son of Man is going to come in a cloud with might and great glory. Look, when those things happen, look above and raise your heads because our redemption is coming near. My beloved, the Lord is, has not deceived us. The Lord has spoken to His church. The Lord Jesus is returning. The Lord Jesus is at the gates. And here on the text, the prophecy is here. The clouds are dense. The prophecies are being fulfilled. There is no longer any time to be playing playing with church. No, there is no time for us not to have a commitment with, the, with the eternity. There is no time for us to play like you were servants of the Lord. It's time to attack, to be paying attention, to be prepared for this great day. And here, the text says the following. He will come upon us like the rain, but not like a a common rain, but the rain that wets the, the spring rain that wets the earth in the time, in the past, the, in the, the farmers, there were two important rains for, the, for their harvest. One was a late rain. It was was time the early rain, which was the rain that where they were supposed to plow the earth and seed to sow the land, so that this fruit will receive this strong rain. And with the strength of this rain, the the fruit would sprout and gain would gain strength and grow. This is the early rain. The spring rain was at the end of the harvest was the one that they were waiting for f before the harvest the rain that was going to pro announce the harvest and this one also prophetically is like what what the church is the early rain represents the holy spirit that comes down from heaven in the yes, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes down, that was the beginning of the primitive church, of spiritual gifts, uh, spe people speaking in tongues, the revival. Jesus will return. Jesus died, but Jesus will return. That was the message. The church is developing, the church expanding, the church growing, going to the arenas. So then we go to the seven letters. I believe everyone knows about the letters. Those are the periods of the church all the way until our days, the last church, the church of the time called soon. And we are waiting for the spring rain, the rain of, of the harvest. That's when Jesus is coming to take his bride when Jesus comes to heaven, but he's not, 
we're going to meet with him in heaven. He's not going to come down. He's, he will say, come, beloved, my father, come and receive us inheritance, the kingdom that has been prepared for you. So we should be paying attention, Atten pay attention to the prophecies, as well as pay attention to our lives before the Lord, because he will come in a twinkling of an eye. We have seen here in our days, in Brazil, everybody was speaking about a, a, a famous uh, person, a famous singer, 26 years old. She died yesterday in a plane crash. And the, the consternation that took place when this episode happened in Brazil. Who knows the day? Who knows the hour? Jesus may not return today, tomorrow, or the day after, but we may go to heaven. But we may meet him. Are we ready? Or are we still limping between two paths? Or are we still filled with doubts regarding Jesus or his return? The faithful church of the Lord has received a message from the part of the Lord. Jesus is returning, but if he doesn't return today, tomorrow, in 10 days, or in 10 years, we will depart to be with him, independent of our age. She was 26, this woman was 26 years old, but we heard about people 30, 50, 90 years old that passed away. Only, only the Father knows when the Son will return, and only the Father knows when He will call you individually to be with Him in the glory. Let's be them in the Lord. Let's sing a song to the Lord.
He has spoke to his church, has guided us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are great, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorified be the name of the Lord. You're holy, Lord. We have not lacked the revelation of the Lord in our lives. We have not lacked the care or direction. We are privileged people. The Lord gave a revelation regarding a sister that has had doubts regarding the return of the Lord Jesus. I don't know if one day you believed and now you lost this hope, lost this love, this first love. But you have doubts regarding the return of the Lord Jesus. This song that we sang, that we were singing, He will return one day. The Lord wanted he wanted to visit. He was visiting this sister. He was giving complete deliverance regarding this understanding and this thought in her mind. And this moment, through doing the service, she was speaking to herself, "I'm not prepared," because she realized that the return of the Lord Jesus was imminent, is evident, is truthful. It's not a utopia. It's it's reality. The Holy Spirit made her understand that when she looked into herself, she would say to herself, I'm not prepared. And the Lord is telling this woman tonight that if she gives her heart to Jesus, her entire heart, and accept Him, tonight, He's, he's making you ready to receive this blessing. Salvation is being extended to each one of us every day. Many times we enter into difficult situations that many times we feel like we are going to, uh, not going to get out of. But the Lord is blessing you. Maybe you felt this, this brightness in your heart and the salvation of the Lord. But the Lord is going to renew your life tonight. Don't leave this place without receiving this renewal. The song was, was sang. The message was preached. But now this boy is in our court. You need to make this decision. Do you want it? Do you want heaven? Because heaven, the heaven is for but a few. Do you want heaven? It's here for you. At your disposal. You just need to want and grab onto this opportunity. In the name of brethren. I'm going to ask now two brethren, brother, sister, to stand up and glorify the Lord for the blessing of salvation that we have in Jesus. Lord, we glorify, we praise the Lord for the care of the Lord with us, for our lives, 
for the strong hand that has been upon us at any moment for the deliverance, Lord. There has been open doors. We have so many things to thank the Lord for. You have been good to us. You protect their homes. You preserve our lives, Lord. We know that soon we'll be with the Lord in eternity. Yes, my Lord, all the praise, all the glory may be given to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, also exalt your name. We praise you, Lord, for the care of the Lord towards our lives. Lord God, we praise you because we know that you will return and soon you will get take your church to be with you. We're going to be able to say, Maranatha, that will be fulfilled and you know that we have been with us in spite of the trials and difficulties many times Lord many think about giving up but you have has held us with your strong hand Lord we praise you and glorify you because you are good God because you know our hearts and you know our necessities Lord you know when we are afflicted and you help us you uh, give us help Lord we know that the difficulties have been many but we have a God that takes care of us and we praise you Lord and exalt your name because to this day you have helped us Lord we want to say that we love the Lord because you loved us first Lord your love touched our heart and but our only joy is to be in your presence is to know that there is a God that takes care of our lives Lord we praise you because we are part of this kingdom of a people that is waiting for Maranatha to be fulfilled. We exalt you and glorify you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to finish the service that we are presenting before the Lord, presenting our lives before the Lord. Lord God, we want to present once again our lives before your altar. Present the service, Lord, before your author, and ask, Lord, that everything that has been said, everything that has been saying, the glorifications, that your spirit may work into our hearts so that we may understand the prophetic plan that you have for each one of us and testify of the return of your son, Jesus, we present before you our lives, this service before your author. Prepare us, Lord, for the service tomorrow morning, so Sunday school, and the service at night tomorrow, so that salvation may once again be realized in our midst. We pray, a really thankful Lord, for yet this other opportunity of singing songs to you and to hear a word. We're thankful, Lord. And blessed be your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We are coming to the end of yet another service of glorification to the Lord. And John, just going to speak about a, a few announcements with regarding regards to the seminar that we have in Orlando. The registration they, they will finish next week. So see my brethren, there are 400 spots the brand from other states. They are, cra they are dying to come here. So let's do the registration very quickly so that no one was left out. Same nice for everyone. Yes, but it, is, it gives preference to us. So if you can come home, do the registration, or you can have also the possibility to pay in the church. If there is any situation you have a need, Bring it to us, the pastor. This will be the least important. Important is to do the registration. So the message is given with regard to the registration regarding to seminar. There are a few spots and it will end next week. So the seminar here for the children is going to be on the 20, 21st. It's this, not, not this coming Saturday, but the next, they are Saturday, the adolescents, 
and Sunday, uh, the children intermediary. So the church may be praying and inviting. We are going to share the invitations. I think we are going to post the invitation in the group so that even until the physical invitation is ready that we can hand out. So as the brand to pray regarding this so that and, and also inviting. It's not a seminar. It's an evangelization. So it's important that we make the invitation every everything else. Sunday school tomorrow we begin Sunday school in presence so ten thirty will be here in presence participate of the Sunday school which is always a blessing, a great victory to be here to, to participate on this Sunday School. And also reminding that tonight is the summertime is over. It's instead of midnight, it's going to be 11, an, an extra hour of sleep. So Sunday School is going to be 11.30. Cannot complain that it's too early. So those are the the announcements the pastor sabado has to tell the church so here there is there are the announcements so now we have a meeting with group b upstairs yes yes very well so the classes the children in the intermediary and adolescents they they came back the adolescents they are meeting on thursdays we have a service on Thursday, and the adolescents meet in the upstairs. And on Saturday, the intermediaries, they are meeting. And tomorrow is the children's school is on the EBD. Those are three different days. And the province on, um, until we have a new church, where we have enough room for everyone. And to all the peace of the Lord. aos irmãos que não é onze e meia o culto não é dez e meia ele lá falou oh, rapaz. dez e meia o culto ok da IBD não é onze e meia me ajuda aí 